She is an expert in both physical and mental peak performance. She trains your brain and allows you to reach new heights of success never dreamed of. She is a published author, earning a PhD in applied psychophysiology and holds a master's in sports psychology. She is a figure competitor, trains the brain and trains the body and embodies living functionized. She lives up to the name of Beauty Brains Brawn. She is Shante Gertz, and this is the Shante Gertz Functionized Podcast. Welcome to the Functionized Podcast. This is your mad scientist, Jim, and I am joined today by the real host of the show, Beauty Brains Brawn, Shante. Before I get into it, I want to promote sleep. As you may have seen on Facebook, I have been promoting my own sleep. Not so much promoting, but kind of educating. Utilizing different supplements, utilizing different techniques, utilizing the amazing technology that Shantae utilizes, and tracking my different sleep patterns. And it's actually quite fascinating. If you haven't seen it already, check out our functionized Facebook page and see the different changes and what can happen in your own body. And when you have questions, contact us, most especially Shantae. If you are having difficulty sleeping, contact Shantae. If you are not getting a deep sleep, if you're waking up feeling exhausted all the time, if you need that cup of, oh, what's that coffee? The Death Wish coffee. <laughs> Ah, 600 milligrams at 3 in the afternoon to keep you going. Call Shantae. Now, Shantae is with Functionize. She is a true Functionize team member. She's the founder of Functionize, so. But we have spliced a specific site for her, very simple, ShantaeGets.com, where you can schedule complimentary consultation to go over what deficiencies that you may have and how she can best guide you to not just achieve, but to exceed your goals and your wildest expectations. I can't give her enough credit for all that she does. She has been a game changer for not only myself, but for so many hundreds and will be thousands and thousands across the globe. Other than all of her fans on Facebook, who are literally thousands across the globe, thank you guys for all your comments. Keep them clean. <laughs> so today's topic is going to be on relationships. Now, Shantae and I work together, and a lot of people decide that there's no freaking way that they could work with their spouse. You do your thing, I do my thing, maybe we'll see each other on the weekend. I don't think it started out that way. I don't think that people saw each other, had that flicker in that eye, and said, I'll see you when I see you, peace out, and by the way, leave me in your will. Don't think it happened that way. So what is different? Like, why is it that we work so well together and truly enjoy being around each other? At least I enjoy being around her. I don't know if she feels the same way about me, but, you know, it is what it is. So we kind of broke down 10 different issues that occur in relationships and hopefully some of this resonates with you so before we get going going let me ask Shante here do you actually like hanging out with me or is this just you know, a good face that you put on I like it it's more fun coming to work knowing that you're here and if for some reason Shante today seems a little short on words Shantae decided today, uh, I love Not these, today. a few days ago, I love these uh, tangents that keep going <laughs> on, that she's going to do a three-day detox, and minus caffeine, pretty much minus everything, and some people have no problems going through it, her body kind of revolts. You know she's detoxing with the mass amounts of headaches. Wouldn't that be correct? Everyone talk quiet. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. So why in the blue sky world did you decide that you want to do a, a, a detox for yourself? 
A water fast? A water fast. A, a, a true... Uh -huh. A true detoxification process as it's meant to be, not a fad pill, but, you know, a true get your body to release the senescent cells, clean up, and utilize what's only really needed in your body. Well, as most people know, I'm in the early stages of my contest prep, so trying to maximize my performance and feeling sluggish and bloated and just not as much energy as I would like, I thought it would be a good idea to have a little reset mm -hmm. to get rid of what my body doesn't need and what's holding me back from performing at a higher level so that I can have better results this go round and truly be ready. So that's, that's what I'm doing. I'm flushing out the junk. <laughs> Not that I eat junk, but, you know, cells, they still build up stuff over time. And I do this, I don't know, once a quarter like, Yeah. yeah. Kind of go through this little reset, and then you feel great. So I'm at, what, like 40 at first? Some, no, 20, 30. <laughs> She's losing brain function. I am losing brain function. Most people feel like absolute garbage. Day one, people can typically get through. It's not fun at the end of the day, especially if you're cooking dinner for your family. Yeah, that's the worst. Uh, I actually ate lunch yesterday, like, hidden. Like, I was like a little kid sneaking some cheese and hummus. Cookies. <laughs> <laughs> it should have been cookies. But it was cheese and hummus and, like, downing water so she wouldn't see it. Not to make her feel bad. But day two is usually the roughest, and by the 72-hour mark is when you start to get, for the most part, give or take a couple hours here or there, that rush of clarity, that true power. When I put people on the ARX that are doing fasts, usually around that time, they hit records like none other. It is amazing, which will be amazing to see you in 72 hours on that. Yes, it will. So that's what's going on. If you have any questions on it, ask us, support at functionize.com. And we'll be more than happy to discuss and go over with you on that, even do more podcasts on fasting. Just go to the search tab and hit fasting or intermittent fasting, and which this is not intermittent, but you will get a better sense and understanding of what's going on. I think uh, uh, even autophagy, autophagy, mm -hmm. potato, potato, whichever way you like to We've pronounce it. We've talked about that. We've talked about that in, haven't in a while, but we've mm -hmm. definitely talked about that a lot. And it's a great determination of will, too, because it's mind over matter. It's very easy to give in. But when you set your mind to something in which you can prove to yourself that you can go through with a three-day detox, then, you know, you feel proud and accomplished. And if you can do this, you can do anything. Absolutely. So, do you trust me? I do trust you. Is trust something that's just given, or do you think that trust is something that True trust is kind of just built up over a lot of time. It takes time. It absolutely takes time. And there's a lot of levels of trust. There's trust, you know, with your life. There's trust with the business. There's trust in taking care of the kids. You mm -hmm. know, there's a lot of aspects of trust that don't just happen. It seems like relationships that fail or stress in relationships, which drives people away, is that lack of trust. I, I've seen, oh, uh, even when we first met, you know, you're 18 years old. 18, freshman year in college. Who trusts anybody uh, at that stage? Right. <laughs> I step away for one second, and we're out and about, and you got like five guys that are like swooped over. You know, this, and... This is what it is. A lot of guys <laughs> would be, you know, at the point, you know, back in the day, I would be a little, like, flustered. The jealousy crept in. Mm -hmm. Difference, I think, not to say I'm so awesome that nothing affects me ever, but now if I were to get up and use the men's room and come back and we're out and about and five guys have swooned around for some reason, not that this ever happens, but I'm just going to the extremes. Of course you are. There's a little bit, yeah. <laughs> there's a little difference of comfort and confidence factor. Mm-hmm. Even girls, uh, I see, they get enraged if their guy talks to another girl. They work together, a co-employee, right. a friend that they've had forever. Girls get 
Very ripped. jealous. Ripped. Uh huh. And it seems to tear people apart. Mm-hmm. It at least adds a ton of stress, isn't it? It really does. There's lack of money words. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I know your head. It's cool. <laughs> there is also a thing, even if people are committed. I mean, truly committed. You've pledged, I'm yours, you're mine, we're going to go through life together. Something called emotional infidelity. Mm -hmm. Even if there's no physical contact, people can be emotionally drawn. Somebody wants to text somebody more. Um, Somebody, that's a great one. Texting all the time. Well, you hear it, you know, work husbands and work wives and things like that, you Mm -hmm. know. It can draw a wedge between the husband and wife because now you're devoting more time to your not spouse or significant other. Right. It's one thing to joke about it, but it's another thing if you really take a full, in-depth look at it. Am I spending that much more time with somebody else? What am I doing for them that I'm not doing for my spouse, my significant other, my fiancé, long-term life partner, whoever it may be with them? It is about commitment to the other person. I mean, a true embodiment. When they say, till in good times and bad, There's I didn't get it. There's going to be good times and bad. <laughs> I, I promise I didn't get it at first. Yep, you say it. Sure, good times and bad. Okay, you stick through it. And there's certain times when I remember, like, screw this. Mm-hmm. It's not easy. No, definitely not easy. But there comes a certain level, I think, of total appreciation for another person where no matter how many times they leave an animal on the wall or leave spiders in the shower (laughs) me with the wet towels on the end of the bed that is frustrating as it is and I'm always going to leave my shoes in front of the closet yes exactly (laughs) (laughs) eventually hopefully if you really want to be with that person you kind of say screw it whatever it is what it is. There's it's not harming anybody. No, there's a million other things that you appreciate about them. Yeah, and you're right. It's not a harm. It, mm-hmm. It's. it's we really all have not. idiosyncrasies. All of us. Mm-hmm. That's another thing that literally it, it breaks people apart. Um, Acceptance. Trust in money is a huge one. Are you both on the same page with money? Do you both agree to a budget and adhere to a budget? Or is money just going out as fast as it's coming in? Or does one person have a job at Victoria's Secret and spending their entire paycheck that's not going to rent whatsoever and go into Victoria's Secret clothing or Ann Taylor clothing or whatever store it is that you like to go to as opposed to contributing towards a greater good and greater goal? That happens oftentimes where one of the spouses, one of the partners makes more and the other person feels it's kind of their spend money. And it doesn't go well, especially when someone's busting their hump for the greater good in both of them. It's definitely something that has to be agreed upon and understood and everybody on the same page with that because finances, as silly as it is, is one of the, what is it, we learned in pre cana next to infidelity is the number one reason people yes. break up. So I guess technically it's number two. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But, you know, lack of money. Yes, money and lack of money. Creates. A lot of stress. Yeah. I was going to say challenges, but yes. Different challenges in different ways. One, to survive. The other, well, when you have an abundance of anything, it can start to get complicated. Mm -hmm. Trips, cars, things that you can do with it, garbage that you get yourself into, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Everything's a balance. You know, I talk a lot about goals and smart goals and creating plans and what I do and, and who I work with. And finance is one of those areas that takes a lot of planning and goal setting and mm-hmm. management. There's also a trust in reliability. Can I trust this individual to do what they say they're going to do and not do what they say that they won't do? This is huge. I mean, more than, you know, you're going to pick up the kids from school at whatever time, and then you decide that you're going to not do that. That's a problem. (laughs) (laughs) Are you going to show up to the in-law's house? Uh, That goes a long way. 
Are you going to... Are you going to vacuum the house? Are you going to cook a meal? Are you going to not blow your check on gambling? Are you going to take care of yourself? Are you going... I mean, all these little, little things, they all add up. And those little things that add up either lead to a deep level of trust, knowing that the person that you're with can literally say, oh my goodness, the sky is actually green. And you don't have to go outside and look at the screen. You just say, huh, it's green. Big deal. It is a big deal. And uh, I personally believe a lot of stress is taken off when you can trust the person fully and wholeheartedly to do both that. Not do what they say that they won't do and do what they say that they will do. Mm-hmm. And it's something we teach the kids, too. If you tell us you're going to do something, do it. Exactly. You know, and it starts early. There's a trust factor of mutual goals. Are the goals of a couple aligned? Or is one going to take a job halfway across the world in some other industry and the other person wants to have children and be close to their family? That is not going to work long term. No. Most likely. Just saying. People will end up growing apart, unfortunately. So mutual goals are quintessential in the growth. I mean, it, it's a team. Mm-hmm. And teams like to win. And the only way you to win is... Playing well, together. Exactly. I like to play together. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Different expectations. What are the expectations of one another? What are your expectations of me? Hmm. I don't know. I am scot-free. Woo! <laughs> no expectations. Do what I want, when I want, how I want it. Yeah. No, it's not that. I I know when you're going to be at the gym or out for a run or when you're here at the office. You know, the expectations are literally to be where we are to be mm-hmm. and do what we're to do. You know, I don't expect you to do dishes because you don't actually wash the dishes. Hey, guys, here's a uh, little, uh, <laughs> little tip, all right? So for like a month, offer to do the dishes because you're a sweetheart and then do them really bad. Like leave food caked on it, leave soap all over it, water's all over the place. I mean, just make the biggest mess and then, you know, play dumb because you're trying your hardest eventually I mean you're gonna take a lot of abuse for about a month but eventually she won't let you do dishes ever again all right don't really do that but you know that is a way (laughs) so there's that expectation Uh, you know I'm not gonna change the oil in my car so that I expect you to do Mm mm-hmm and I expect to do it and I'm cool with that Mm mm-hmm but you know how to do it I do you do know how to do it I choose not to right I have other things to do (laughs) <laughs> like, watch me and hang out with me while I change your oil. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Or make drinks or something, you know. Says the detox girl. <laughs> it's only for three days. <laughs> ah, different expectations is something that individuals obviously have to come together upon to have the same expectations. And y- you know what the other person is going to do easy as that uh, even going at different speeds is another thing when one person is going to go full tilt on one thing and the other person is going to hold back forever that's going to cause a lot of stress one person can be held back the other person can be feel forced and there's going to be animosity i often i know move at a much faster pace than you absolutely but yeah. your pace helps how do i say it this is going to sound so uneducated but Helps me stop screwing up so much. Right. You make me check my work. You make me dot my I's. You make me cross my T's. There's something to be said for extra time. It does allow you to go back and double check your work. Mm -hmm. Not make those silly mistakes by rushing. That's one thing we say, slow down rabbit, right? (laughs) Slow down rabbit. I hear that a lot. Yeah. Xander Man gets that a lot too. Mm -hmm. (laughs) about being mindful it's taking the time I am more thorough in my work I do not go through things very quickly because I want it to be quality Mm -hmm. there's another thing to be said about compatibility so who here by a show of hands 
uh, if you're listening on this on your car, keep your hands on the wheel, please. Who by a show of mental hands has ever been people watching and see a couple where one of the two is absolutely beautiful, handsome? I mean, like, movie Picture amazing. perfect. And the other person you look at and wonder, what? Uh. And they're actually together. And I only say that because I want to talk about compatibility. Now, I'm not saying that beauty is not in the eye of the beholder. It, it's just an example here. There's compatibility on so many ways. But in this case here, physical compatibility. Are you attracted to who you're with for more than his or her bank account? That's not an attraction. And that's not going to last. You're going to be miserable more times than not. There's so much more out there where if we go back to working on the same page with the same goals in mind, you know what? Both of you can actually grow that bank account together instead of just mooching off of somebody else. Do you enjoy being with them and want to see them naked? Yeah, that's a good point. Naked, good. Naked, good. Couples that have sex more stay together more and they're happier. It's just part of it. Mm-hmm. There's, it's said, what is it? Married couples, a year or two after they get married, it's like three times a month. And then as they get farther and farther along, maybe it's like once a month and months maybe every other month. If you got together, or when you got together, was it once every other month? Probably not. Probably not. Was it once every other 10 minutes? Good chance. Good chance. Yeah, exactly. Good chance. So why does it have to stop? You know, people talk about, I got the dad bod, got the mom bod. Hey, let's have fat sex. (laughs) Yay, fat sex. That's going to be so gratifying and so hot and amazing. Oh, my God, fat sex. (sighs) No, uh, seriously, I mean, if you're not really attracted to the person you're with, then that's going to fade. And part of what you two enjoy together is going to be gone and faded. And what are you doing at that point? Are you just holding on because you said, I do, all these years ago? It's no fun to stay somewhere out of obligation. But it creates a lot of resentment. Of course. And at the same side of that, there's the idea of growing apart. It's easy to grow apart if you're not together. If you don't want to be with this person at all during the day. If you don't find them attractive to be with physically and mentally, if they don't mentally stimulate you, then it's so easy to grow apart, which is going to eventually lead to an emotional affair, which is going to lead to a physical affair, Mm -hmm. and then pain and suffering. It really, uh, maybe I'm a bad person to be able to give advice on this, but I don't understand when people say I need to get the, or we need to find that flicker or that flare that that burned out so very long ago because it's been over 20 years and that flicker and flare is a absolute bonfire still to this day. It's not that you have to give advice on it. <laughs> good. If it's flickering or flaring, or you're good. If you're dwindling. That's because people oftentimes let life interfere with the person that's supposed to be there for them all the time. You know, you, True. you get busy at work, you push away your spouse. You get busy, you know, traveling, you push away the kids. You get busy with the kids, you push away the husband. I mean, come on, we went through that. Yeah. New babies. Uh, I'm sorry, sorry guys. it's going <laughs> to happen. You know, there's a hierarchy and new children trump husbands. I, I, I've done it three times. And while, you know, you were a great supportive husband, there's certain things that you cannot do that I am truly or solely responsible for. And Boob milk. <laughs> if the baby wants to eat, the baby's going to eat, you know. So it's learning that you're not being replaced. The children are not replacing you. But in that moment, they need more attention than you do. I think that goes back a lot to the 
expectations. Yes, it does. Knowing what the expectations are of each other and having that trust and absolute appreciation for that other individual down to the cellular level. Mm -hmm. Knowing that you wouldn't be pushing me away just because you're disinterested. You're really not pushing me away. You're just focusing huh. your attention onto our Correct. child. To which with that mutual appreciation, I then focus my attention onto taking care of you and our child and let nature take its course as the child grows up. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly it. You know, with the littlest one, she'll be five next month, which is kind of crazy. I know. She's, <laughs> so She's lost a tooth over the weekend. Saying, <laughs> they grow so fast. But then it enters in a whole new phase of life. Like there's so many chapters. You know, there's a chapter with one kid, and then there's two, and then there's three, and now they get older, and then you can do more things, and then you can spend more time with each other, and it's a constant evolution. You know, couples, it's always evolving, and for us, I feel we get better with age, like fine wine and cheese. Mmm. Yeah. <laughs> cheese. Um, anyway, I'm hungry, but that's not the point here. No, food's not the point right now. <laughs> food's not the point. Um, but no, like those realistic expectations, the appreciation for one another, the desire for one another, mm -hmm. you know, it, I don't get sick of you, you know, working here all the time. You know, I look forward to seeing, you know, you are my best friend. And I think most couples start out as best friends. I think then that they say that they're best friends but actions don't necessarily match up to that. It's kind of an idea that they would like. For some. Yeah, uh, for some. Hopefully for the majority that they are and they stay that way and live happily ever after. I think what helps with us is that we have so many similar interests. Our whole educational background is That's a big one. very, very similar. Um, you know, we both are into sports and science and the human body and I do work on the brain and in I think the muscular lot, system, you I think know, that's so the mutual goals aspect too. Yeah, I mean, it's just the same interest. How many girls actually like football? Not too many. How many guys like football? Just about all of them. I found a girl that like football. It mm -hmm. kind of works out better that way. Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot to be said about finding somebody that does have mutual interests as opposed to, you know, a guy that can't stand shopping and nails, and that's all the girl ever wants to do. Yeah, that's boring. I mean, I, I could do it, but it's <laughs> there's more to life that true there's also a topic here of narcissism which those that have narcissistic tendencies are extremely I should first I'd say identified to be extremely susceptible to infidelity well, and they live in a me 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 world they do they often lack true intimacy mm -hmm. they cannot get that true, deep, meaningful connection with another individual. They have a superiority complex. They'll often put others down just because, put themselves up. They will be very manipulative, extremely irresponsible, and they break all the rules. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I command that you stay inside by 9 o'clock. I'm not coming home till I don't care when. Right. Uh, that, that's very commonplace for it. Rules don't apply to them. They just are on upper, uh, on the little on the little pedestal. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, it doesn't work. I'm sure, we've come across people like that before. Yeah, I I know quite a few people that have those tendencies. You know, and it, they can be very difficult to to live with and to manage, um, or to work with. Mm -hmm. You know, it does make things difficult. And unfortunately, someone that has those tendencies, unless they're willing to change or they want to, I mean, they're not going to recognize that anything's wrong with them. You know, that's the hardest part is true. if you're with somebody like that, they don't see anything wrong with them. Very true. And it makes it harder for the counterpart. Some very simple reasons why relationships don't go right is abuse emotional and physical abuse, somebody often narcissistic, putting down their significant other, or even others around them in an, any other type of relationship, and physical abuse. You beat the crap out of somebody, you're not going to bring them closer. You're harming okay. them. It, no, it's not okay. It's not okay. 
if you are in an abusive relationship, you gotta find a way to get that courage and confidence and do something about it, get out of that situation. You know, it's gonna happen again as much as they say, I promise it'll never happen again, as you probably already experienced. And it's very sad and unfortunate, and the more it occurs, the more you gotta overcome long term. So get out of it now. There's resources, you know, there's so many centers and advocates, you know, to help people in abusive relationships. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So do your due diligence and find something that works for you. Absolutely. There's also life habit abuse. Are you with somebody that has an alcohol problem, a drug problem, or a sex problem? Yes, sex is an addiction. Some people turn to sex like drugs and alcohol. Musicians, pro athletes, you hear it coming out now more and more. All the time. It is a it, it's a deal breaker in, in relationships. And these are things to before you pledge the rest of your entire life with somebody, these are things to weed out. And oftentimes people are not gonna change unless they want to change. That that's big. You know, a lot of people say, you know what, I can fix them. I'll be their knight in shining armor. You can't. I can change him. And unfortunately, it's sad. It, it most likely is not going to happen unless they literally say, "Listen, I get an alcohol problem. I need to change. I need to fix it. I can never drink again. Will you stand by my side? Not drink around me. Possibly you not drink anymore and come to some meetings, come to some groups with me. And if there's somebody willing to do that, then yeah, you've got a deep connection. But otherwise, it's it's a battle. And does not bode well in relationships. No. The... Yeah, you're hilarious. <laughs> oh, fast away. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be better tomorrow. I promise this podcast audience, there are times when we drive somewhere in the car and she just keeps going. We, we should just podcast in the car sometimes. We... Did We've it. talked about it. Coming home from what? One of your Spartan Oh, Spartan races? Race. Yeah, when I couldn't move. Yeah, that was a fun day. We not t- for me. <laughs> well, I guess it was fun for me, not for you. Yeah. Yeah. Not for you. You got to not spaz up and Yeah, I just stood there and got It was great. Yay. And that was a cold day. Doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> we briefly touched upon it before, but other than infidelity, biggest thing in relationships that breaks people up is money. Money, 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 money. When Shantae and I were doing uh, pre cana as counselors, we would sit at tables each session, was it twice a year? Once a Once. year? Once a year. And sure enough, nine out of 10 oh, people at the twice. table would decide that, yep, we're gonna have separate bank accounts, and then maybe you have a third bank account, put money into that one for all the family expenses. And we actually tried that as well for a while. And it started to lead to some financial distrust issues. Mm -hmm. It's my money. I've earned it. And that's the mentality that I get with a lot of people. It's my money. I earned it. I can do with it what I want. The only problem is you've decided to step into a relationship. And in that relationship, it's not about you ever again. It will never be about you. If kids end up coming along the way, it's really not about you. But even if you're just with somebody else, and I'm talking about a committed relationship where she's your girl, he's your guy, forever and ever, for all eternity, that's the way that you two mutually chose it. It's not about you. So to have your own bank account like that, it leads to a lot of distrust and dysfunction. We eventually decided, hey, let's merge it. Everything's there together. Mm -hmm. And... Obviously, there's financial planning that goes along the way, but still your names are attached to the accounts in every way. Everything is an open book. Oh, that's a a good one. It's about being in an open book. Well, that should be. There shouldn't be no secrets. There should be no secret credit cards on the side. Mm -mm. Don't let my so-and-so know about this. Um, Yeah, I mean, the more it is an open book, the more there's financial clarity that I've found, the more that we are on the same page of what goes to what, when, how much is spent on this, 
let's save for this. Here's what we're putting it into now. And that's just another team building activity, really. Mm -hmm. And then you get to watch Mama Dollar and Papa Dollar and then a lot of Kitty Dollars form. And they return with more kids and more kids. And you do it together. It's done right. And you grow together, which is rewarding. It is. <laughs> oh, so <laughs> you going to sign up for another 20 years with me? I haven't unsigned. You haven't unsigned. <laughs> <laughs> I'll sign again. Let's see, what do we do? We renew. Well, this coming year will be 15 years, so we might do something. We should do something. In September. What should we do? Hmm. Renew vows. Mm -hmm. Go somewhere nice. Mm -hmm. All the above. Overlook uh, go to the, uh, the castle on the Hudson, maybe? We have been talking about that for mm -hmm. quite some time. Seems like that would be a nice getaway. A beautiful time of year. Done. Brilliant. Oh, I love it. <laughs> okay. Anything else, Beauty Brains Braun? Just stay true to who you are and stay true to who you're with. That's a crap ton of good advice. That's all I got today. Got it in. <laughs> I want to thank you from the bottom of our hearts for being with us today. You can hit us up on Facebook and Instagram at Functionized. There is a thing called a website called www.functionized.com. Don't forget ShantaeGets.com and support at Functionized.com. So many different ways to get in touch with us. We love your fan mail. We love your questions. We love your comments. Keep them coming. Five-star review. If you've enjoyed this, it'll take you a minute. We ask that you take that minute and do it if you've enjoyed being with us, and that way we can get out to more and more individuals. Biohacking relationships. Living functionized for your life. This is your mad scientist. I am out. Beauty Brains Brawn is out.